nature lovers and welcome to another exciting episode of Environmental Systems and Societies. Today is all about competition and other types of interactions. Let's start by talking about population density. And population density is basically how many organisms of a population live in a defined area. So how many elk are in that ecosystem, okay? There's factors that affect this population size. Natality, natality, mortality, immigration, and migration. And, and uh, so this is an example of mortality, right? So if natality goes up and mortality stays the same, it makes sense the population size is gonna get bigger and likewise, the population density is gonna increase, right? All right, but when it does increase, a result is competition. And this is when two or more organisms compete for limited resources. And there's two types. There's intraspecific and inter. And intra is when it's within the same species. Okay, and so here's an example of that. When uh, they're fighting over a mate, they're competing for that mate and they're showing who's the strongest. So the population size is actually controlled by limiting factors like water, food, mates, space. But uh, when they reach that limit, when there's not enough for everybody, that's called carrying capacity. That's the most, that's the largest the population can get. At that point, competition becomes severe. And this is when inter or intraspecific competition happens and they start to mark their territory, for example. Okay, when they mark their territory, they're saying the rest of their species stay out. And when they compete for it, um, they, when that's broached, like when they say, sorry, I'm coming in anyway, they fight. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they figure out solutions, they get along, but usually they fight. Um, so sometimes they do share resources, but usually they out-compete. So if these two packs of wolves fought, one won like this, and they have the right to hunt that elk, okay? So here's an example that includes both inter and intra. It's a garden. So when gardens are competing, you plant your tomato plants or your squash plants, and they're competing against native pulk weeds to see, to, for light and water and so forth, that's interspecific. There's two different species. They're fighting for those resources. But once the pulk wins, that's called competitive exclusion, and it pushes them out. And so what's left then is just the poke plants, and now they are competing intraspecific competition, right? Now some, it turns out some things, they don't try and compete directly because they won't win. Like this crocus flower could never beat an oak tree to get light. So what it does, it comes up with this clever strategy to grow early. It comes out of the ground, it gets all the sunlight, it makes flowers, it makes seeds, it does all this when it needs all the energy, and this is all before the oak tree ever puts out a leaf. Then the rest of the year when there's much less sunlight and they don't need as much energy to live, they still survive, okay? So competition is just one example of an interaction. There's others though, predation, herbivore, mutualism, commensalism. So let's talk about those. Predation, you know that, that's predator prey. It's when an animal or a plant eats another animal, okay? Usually it's animal to animal. So in the Ozarks, a great example is when an owl comes down and eats a skunk, okay? So here it comes, it grabs it, it takes it, it eats it for its energy. It's a heterotroph, right? We know all about that. But a lot of animals and a lot of ecosystems start with uh, herbivores, and herbivory is when an animal eats a plant. So we're familiar around here with cows eating hay, right? But insects eating nectar is also herbivory, and it doesn't depend on the size of the plant or the size of the animal, I'm sorry. Sometimes it can be as big as an elephant or as small as a butterfly. But not, some plants are good with this, you know, with the nectar being eaten, but a lot of plants don't want to be eaten, so they develop defenses, like this poison ivy. And that defense is this oil that gets on your skin and causes these blisters. And this tree is pretty much saying, yeah, go ahead, eat me if you can. But you can't because that, that's a black locust and those thorns will hurt. So, we move on to parasitism, <clears throat> and it's when one species um, either lives in or on another species and takes some of their energy, some of their food, maybe drinks their blood or eats some of their skin. And so, a, a really good example around here is a tick. A tick is a parasite, the host is the dog or a mammal. The tick burrows into the skin, starts drinking the blood for energy. Normally that does not kill the host, but if it's a good place, lots of ticks will go there and lots of energy will be taken and eventually it can kill the host. Mutualism is a situation where uh, both parties benefit. So in this case, these animals are do have ticks. They don't want ticks, so these oxpecker birds actually take the ticks from them. 
The oxpeckers get food, the uh, big animals lose parasites, and all is good. Commensalism is when one benefits and one's not affected, like that Spanish moss hanging from the tree or these barnacles on the whale. The tree and the whale aren't affected either way, but the barnacles and Spanish moss get a place to live. So you hear the word symbiosis. That doesn't mean predation or herbivore because it means to live with. So that would be the other ones, the commensalism, the mutualism, the parasitism. This is competition and interactions. I hope it was good. If not, let me know. Peace out, homie. Naked Mole Rat!